But if I was the Kings, yeah, why not go for Jeremy Grant and Sabonis? Could you imagine if they got both? Mm, I don't think I don't think they'd get both unless they parted ways with obviously either De'Aaron Fox or Halliburton or fucking both really because I don't know who else gets the deal done on the Jeremy Grant side if you're trading yeah. Fox for Sabonis. But um, no, well Sabonis would was... be Bagley because there's no way the Pacers wouldn't take Bagley if they're hitting a hard reset. A former pick number two helps, right? Yeah, but he he doesn't he hasn't really shown that much. He doesn't have a whole lot of value as it stands right now. That might change between now and the off season. But as far as this trade deadline goes, I don't think he holds enough value, even if he is attached with picks to trade for a guy like Sabonis, who is you know still an all star. Um, even if he's his team's been performing badly and his value might have dipped and whatever, he's still a quality quality player. So. I don't think the asking price is going to be that low for him. What if Fox um, and Halliburton were both untouchable? Could they get Grant and Sabonis? How many first-round well, picks that, is that? I don't think they could get Grant and Sabonis um, in a world where they don't trade Fox or Halliburton. I think it's only really feasible that they get Jeremy Grant. And look, I don't really know why the Pistons would do that because there's nobody on Sacramento other than obviously Fox and Halliburton that... Detroit would really be interested in. I mean, Barnes for Jeremy Grant is just a what really about um irrelevant what's swap. Name? What's their uh, what's the point guard they brought in? Davion Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. Why not him? Mm, I mean, I guess that could be interesting. I mean, he'd be perfect Detroit for are, the Pacers because Detroit have no choice but to flick Grant. But um, because I'm thinking that Grant has a little bit lower trade value than Sabonis as it stands right now. And they don't really have that many impressive young pieces. And if I'm Sacramento, I'm not throwing away picks for somebody that makes me the eighth seed for a couple of years and potentially leaves. So I think they need to be cautious as far as that goes. If I was Sacramento, um, order of business, number one is getting Buddy Hield and um, potentially Bagley out of town because Hield obviously hasn't wanted to be there for a while. He's one of the few guys with, some decent trade value doesn't really fit all that well. So he probably needs to go if they can find the right package. And then I don't know. I don't know whether they give Fox and Halliburton another year to figure it out or whether they pull the trigger and trade one and just hope to God that they pick the right one. Mm. That's, that's very true. You could also look at it as a piston standpoint. Now they need to trade Jeremy Grant, but. If they can't get an offer for Jeremy Grant, worst case scenario is if they offered him $25 million a season, why wouldn't Jeremy Grant come back? Especially if he wants to be the focal point of the offense. Is that really a bad thing if you're the Pistons mm. to bring back Jeremy Grant? Well, I mean, I think by the time they get to re-signing Jeremy Grant, I think they'd be wanting to move in a different direction and completely building around Cade because um, it's not just about surrounding them with talent. You've got to, you know, make him the focal point at some stage. And I don't think Jeremy Grant helps them too much doing that. Um, I feel like the whole reason he came to Detroit was he was collecting his bag and showing the league that he could do more than just be a role player and then walking out the door again. I thought that was pretty clear from the start. Yeah. Um, if they really wanted to keep him and not lose the value, then they could pay him that, all that money. But who knows, maybe Cunningham's development goes quicker than or we all expect and they're stuck mm. with Jeremy Grant on $25 million when they could be using that money to trade for someone bigger and better that fits better alongside the current players. Yeah. The other thing as well is... Um... When we look at it like this, uh, what's old mate's name that plays alongside Sadiq Bay? Sadiq Bay and Sadiq Grant, Bay, yeah. I don't think really work with each other because both of them are fours, um, mm. and they're ones having to play the three every night. And I just don't know if that is working necessarily. Um, yeah, it's really weird because both are like good perimeter defenders um, and good shooters, but somehow don't work together. Like I don't, mm. I don't know what they're missing. The, in my opinion, the Pistons should almost be better than what they are right now because Cade is playing some really good basketball, and you've got mm. role players there, <clears throat> Sadiq Bay and Jeremy Grant. You should realistically be 
I think, quite a bit ahead of teams like the Orlando Magic and even the Pacers. They should be somewhat on the Pacers level right now. The Pacers mm. are 18 and 32. And the Pistons, they're on paper, their roster doesn't look as bad. You know, well, nearly as bad as what... I don't know, what I mean is it doesn't look, you know, as bad as what it is, right? What it is yeah. on the record, but... It just is. The, t- the team is t- trash, but it should be better, I think. And I don't know if that's a coaching standpoint or if Grant's just not trying hard enough, the inconsistency with Cade, but something clearly needs to change. Um, it- it's just an absolute pain in my opinion, but is there any NBA things you want to talk about? What is something that you've heard maybe that you you want to discuss right now? Is there anything out there? Um. I'm not really. I'm not really sure. I was going to say with um, with the Grant situation, as much as I don't like them as a uh, as a team, I feel like the the obvious perfect thing for him is in Utah. Ooh, what would they give up? Um, obviously, they don't have too many young players that would um, entice the Pistons. But I think if you're the Utah Jazz and you have to give up. Two first, two future firsts to get the deal done. Then I, I really think that they should really look into that. Well, they'd have to match up contracts, right? So who would be the? Would it well, be Bogdanovich? It with, I'm pretty sure you could do it with Ingles, Ingles, Ingles. and who else? Why says, would the Why would the Pistons want Ingles? Well, that's the thing. They probably don't want Ingles. That's why you have to throw in two first round picks as opposed to one because they have no interest in these older veteran players on these $10 million contracts. But um, I feel like he's really their missing piece, somebody that can um, help plug up their obvious perimeter defense problem that got exposed last year and uh, oh, yeah. um, help out Rudy Gobert and also be a, uh offensive option for them, some shot creation outside of Donovan Mitchell in the playoffs because we've all seen how badly he's carried them in the playoffs the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, And it's a good move for Jeremy Grant because if you think about it, it, he's going to a contending team um, and he's getting that status back of being a player that impacts winning while also still being a primary offensive option. I mean, Rudy Gobert is an absolute non-factor on offense other than catching mobs and dunking putbacks. Um, you have Donovan Mitchell, who's obviously the main scorer. Bogdanovich is capable of giving you 20 on any of you. Even He's still you averaging 18 a game, that. which is crazy. But you could say the same thing about Grant. I'd probably put Grant higher in the pecking order than him or yeah. at the same level. And then there's Mike Conley, who's really naturally more of a facilitator anyway. So... He could get the best of both worlds by being on a contender and still being a primary offensive option. So I feel like there's a good chance that he re-signs if they have some success in the playoffs and if they trade for him at the deadline. There's still Royce O'Neal, who would be an incredibly solid role player for the Pistons team mm. if they were to look at him. If yeah, something the contracts like wouldn't Royce match O'Neal, up, but yeah, and two first round Royce picks. O'Neal, Joe would... Ingles and two firsts for maybe Jeremy Grant and, I don't know, a second or something like that. I feel yeah. like it would be a... And look, trade that helps both sides. If you're Utah, you are losing a, like a heart and soul of your team. But like, I mean, for mm. Jeremy Grant, he could be that extra piece that actually because that we we barely, we didn't even really mention them in the um finals conversation, conference finals conversation. But if they were to get Jeremy Grant, dude, that, that team might put would them be in the mix. Oh, yeah, w- wouldn't just might nice. put them in the mix. That would put them. You would think, uh you know, levels of if they got their, you know, stuff right. you like, another shot created to help out Donovan Mitchell. A dude that can mm. hit the three consistently and defend the perimeter and help out, like, a lot with that. Man, that mm. goes far. Like, I don't yeah. think people... He's basically an extra 10 points per game off Royce O'Neal, and he's a better interior guy, I think, than what O'Neal is. Yeah, 100%. So, he's a he's a big upgrade, but... um. It is a it is a tough one, you know. But with Utah, we I think yeah they stay underrated. Like they they're forever an underrated team, right? Yeah, I don't I don't think they're underrated. I think they're underappreciated because we all know what they're going to do in the playoffs. They're going to bomb out in the second round or the um, maybe the conference finals if they get lucky and 
have some injuries to other teams or something, but I feel like that move could make them a more serious threat than they have been in previous years because teams just have them figured out as currently constructed. It's, once it gets to playoff time, as great as Gobert is in the regular season, everybody has to play de- defence in the postseason, and if they're not going to play perimeter defence, he's just going to keep getting exposed. And mm. even beyond that on offence, they have a problem with, having to rely on everything going through Donovan Mitchell, especially going down the stretch of games, which just we've seen time and time again that hero ball doesn't work as well. So Yeah. And once Clarkson has that in insufficient game where he's just shooting terribly, Donovan Mitchell's mm. their only shot creator. Only, like only one, once Clarkson goes and he goes often, like a lot more often than they think. Could Even Jeremy Grant be well. that guy? It's tough to say. He wouldn't be the number two shot creator you would be looking for. A dude that could be more of that guy would actually be Tobias Harris, but he'd be way too expensive. Plus, Philadelphia Mm, do not need more role players. They have 1,400 billion role players. They Mm. don't need what Utah Jazz have. They need a star. And um, that's why I don't think they're going to get rid of Tobias Harris because... Once they get a star for Ben Simmons back, I don't think there's going to be really anyone they can get out of Tobias Harris. Mm. Because, like, I just don't... I can't see it happening. Like, the only... No one's going to offer them a star for Tobias Harris. They're only going to get role players back. Yeah. So, um... But Tobias Harris, would he be the better fit over Jeremy Grant? Like... Um, no, I don't think so, because, um... Doesn't obviously fix the perimeter issue. Yeah problem is that defense on the perimeter and um jeremy grant uh, it, i know his defense has actually dropped off a little bit while he's been in detroit while he's been scoring more but um people forget that um bubble run that the nuggets had and how crucial he was to that and how fucking insane his defense was mm. throughout those whole playoffs for um, sure. emulating what they're trying to do with aaron gordon now and it's sort of semi-working but he's not the same player no. So I feel like that's the that's the move that puts Utah in contention for the first time with this roster. I don't think they would get past a Suns or a Warriors, but I feel like that gives them the ability to compete. Yeah, and, and actually have a chance. This roster, if they're going to stick with this roster anyway, they may as well go all in. So mm, I agree.